is combining uh, my roots of Mexicano and German American, so kind of like the Americana and the contemporary existence of people back to you know Mesoamerica and like the ancientness that is just being a person, you know. That's a beautiful topic to dive into on a sales show. Yeah, um, love it. everyone and welcome to QTVC Live. My name is Julia Arredondo and I'm here with Atlana Seo Witzel. We are currently recording the fourth episode. Okay. We are currently recording the fifth episode of our season 3.0 build out in collaboration with the Chicago Printers Guild and DK Chicago. We are at the Chicago Art Department in Chicago, Illinois. It's great to be back in Chicago to the home of QTVC Live. Atlan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Just excited to be in the space and be in conversation, chat about work and community and all that good stuff. Absolutely. Um, I've been following Atlan's work for a while now since I, I think Spendic Press actually introduced me to your work. And ever since then, I've been following it. Atlan is a Chicago based artist, educator, printmaker. printmaker. Boom. I mean, how, how could I forget that? Oh, yeah, good. yeah, but but also learning about your work and like your ties to communication graphics. Can you just give us um, a quick overview of, of, of your approach to, to art making? Yeah, totally. So I see myself as a maker kind of overall, just because it encompasses so many things. You know, I wanted to be an artist since I was a little kid, but getting to the point where you have the skills to be able to do all this kind of different stuff. And for me, that's where the balance comes into play because it's not always one thing. Um, you know, I think if I was exclusively like a printmaker or something like that, it would hinder the creative process because I need to be able to switch between stuff. What I find really interesting about the work that we have on the show today is that there are three different approaches to the way you disseminate your work. We've got traditional reductive printmaking. We've got a risograph publication that was printed by an outside publishing house, and we've got an original painting. Yeah. Can you give us the rundown of what's available on QTBC Live today? Yeah, yeah. totally. So uh, the first one that we've got is this piece uh, that I did for uh, portfolio uh, with uh, Consejo Gráfico Nacional, uh, which is a, a group of printmakers across uh, North and South America, um, Latinx, and you know all that good shit. Um, yeah. but this piece is just kind of about that relationship between North and South America and, um, you know, putting our hands into politics and, uh, you know, uh, that like that biracial identity that I was talking about before too. Yeah. Um, you know, grounding yourself in place and culture and, uh, you know, Chicago for sure. Yeah. Um, and it's a reductive woodcut, which is one of my favorite processes to do. Um, the middle piece is a book that I did in collaboration with Perfectly Acceptable Press. Uh, it's run by Matt Davis, who's an amazing uh, printer uh, and artist as well. Yeah. But it's about uh, looking at eagles as symbols in different parts of culture and for myself, again, connecting it to uh, America, you know, United States, Mexico and Germany, just so I could narrow the scope of it. But you know, it's uh, samples of stuff that are all, you know, packaging labels, local commercials, uh, sports teams, uh, toys, just print ephemera, which is like my favorite thing to engage with. Um, yeah. So really quickly for anyone watching who is possibly a zinester or like an old school cut and paste designer. This publication here is sort of like Crap Hound 2.0. If you think about <laughs> it like that, like that's what struck me because I grew up with Crap Hound. Yeah. This is like an even more in-depth examination of visual culture yeah. pertaining to, to deeper social issues. It's 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 a fascinating project. Like it, this is such an exciting publication, which is now sold out from your shop. Yeah. So we're gonna link to the perfectly acceptable press shop yeah. because get your copy now. It's going to sell out. Yeah, it's yeah, going yeah. To sell. How much is? We didn't even talk about the price. Yeah, totally. Of this print, we've only got one of these prints available today. Um, what are the prices? Yeah. So, the the 
Eagle Book, bald and otherwise, itself is 15 bucks, so very accessible. That's kind of the point of it. Um, it's a zine, it's a Rezo print. Um, so that's, for me, that's an important element. So easy, easy acquisition of that. Um, for the other two pieces, uh, I've got 200 on this one and then 300 on the painting. Um, yeah, the painting is, you know, there's always an element for me, like I said, playing between the mediums because they allow you to do different things. There's an immediacy uh, for me to be able to work on a painting, even though it's not going to be reproduced in multiple like a print would be. Um, but just kind of processing, uh, passing phrases, uh, you know, that's where the you have a better one comes from. Um, and, you know, again, like Volkswagen, right? That's that's what it literally means is people mover. Mm -hmm. And I think it sounds clunkier and a little bit more charming in English too, because, yeah. you know, that, so, so it's, you know, it's kind of like a Flintstones car, you know, with his feet hanging out the bottom and, uh, but yeah, it's, it's advertising graphics yeah. for things that don't exist. I, uh, yeah, I love that sort of fantasy um, advertising, yeah. which is fun and playful, but also this reminds me, this piece reminds me very much of sort of like a sideshow banner. Um, totally. Which I love, and you even have the grommets already, yeah. uh, which is great. What's an ideal way to hang this original work of art? Uh, you know, I, I, I've had it hanging up for a while just in my apartment, mm -hmm. uh, just with two nails, okay. you know, whatever whatever would fit yeah. through the holes if you want to put it on, a, on you know, hooks or wherever so it can kind of blow in the wind a little bit. Uh, not great for outdoors, I would say, but Good to know. inside, uh, if you get a chance to take a look at it, then that's perfect and maybe mm -hmm. the air conditioning is going to wave it around a little bit. Okay, so it's essentially a kinetic work of art, is that what we're talking about? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, it's not necessary. That wasn't an, a built-in intention of the piece, but I think that's part of, uh, right, the inspiration being that there's always, like, Chicago has great automotive advertising yeah, and sign yeah. painting. It's, it truly does. And it's such a, like, it's such a presence for me. So, I mean, there's definitely some of that energy put into this. Um, but also just, like, playing around with, forms and characters and symbology because that's you know that's that's like my juice that keeps running through everything you know <laughs> the keeps, juice yeah it keeps it yeah. keeps it powered yeah yeah so folks i'm going to run down through the prices one more time yeah, and totally. we're going to take a break and visit atlan in your studio super excited yeah i'll usually come into the space and sometimes I leave a mess for myself and that's kind of a nice chance to kind of gather my thoughts and um, take stock of what I was working on um, the previous day or a couple days ago or last week, whatever uh, it is between, you know, studio sessions. Yeah, studio practice is a very organic thing for me just because uh, I think my primary medium is always drawing but where it goes from there it's always kind of different depending on what the project is or what I've been thinking about or looking at um, and, you know I do a lot of printmaking um, and you know so sometimes it's processing an image to the point where I can get it you know into a state to do some carving or um, maybe it's doing research with books that I have in, you know, the little library hanging out um, and just kind of throwing ideas out there onto the page in a sketchbook or, um, you know, on a fresh piece of paper. Um, and sometimes it's just uh, messing around with things that I have no idea what they're for or where they're going. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty versatile thing um, depending on the day, pretty much. <laughs> I don't know, I think of it as a breath of fresh air a little bit to get out of your depths a little bit into a medium um, that you're not familiar with. And then sometimes you really need the comfort of, you know, I don't know, like for me, rolling out a slab of ink and printing something or, um, you know, the satisfaction of inking something with a brush by hand or, you know, doing tracing uh, stuff for the color separations. Um, you know, it's all it's all part of the process of being in the studio and, you know, working your ideas out from, 
you know, your head to your hand to, you know, whatever, whatever form it's making itself real in the world. All right, everybody, we are back from Atlant Studio. This is QTVC Live Season 3.0, and we are in collaboration with the Chicago Printers Guild and DK Chicago. What is it about wood that you love? It just, it's so labor intensive, no? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a labor of love for sure, but I think the big thing for me is, you know, traditional media always has a tactility to it, and I think that's what's important about, you know, engaging with the work with so much stuff being digital these days. Yeah. Um, just being able to kind of tuck in and feel the material. And especially with reductive, you get to know the work a lot better because you're, you know, eating it away as you, as you make and progress, but the image that you're producing develops. So, and of course, I always have to remember uh, my printmaking professor in undergrad, Kate Lovett, always said, you know, what, what's the reason we make prints? It's because nothing else looks like the print, right? So well, you make woodcuts because it has a wood grain to it and there's a characteristic there because nothing else looks like that. So you can't achieve, you know, you can, all, you can, you can fake and kayfabe every, everything to the point where you're almost there, but we know that it's not. Yeah. Do you think one day it will ever get there digitally? I think, you know, I think you can always try and emulate it and it's a, I think it just depends on what your goals are, right? You know, I think for me, the allure of the matrix in printmaking, um, especially for folks who come from outside that realm of thinking and making work, it's something that seems really foreign. And, oh, you take this thing and put stuff on that and then transfer it to another. Like, that seems whatever, seems anachronistic, seems kind of tedious. and. Yeah. That's kind of the point, you know, because it's, it's, it's grounding you in something else outside of, especially these days with, you know, all the stuff that we have in, in terms of digital technology and communication and all that stuff. I think we've got to take time to slow down sometimes. Um, so that's, that's for me where that importance of, you know, doing, doing the traditional stuff comes from. The actual carving is like, more than half the time, yeah. if, you know, yeah. if not, you know, like 75% of, of the actual, you know, right. process of making. It's the carving, you're designing, you're getting the idea. You're yeah. Probably, I've seen some of your proof books, like, let's, let's break away to look at, at some of these proof books. Yeah, Or yeah. The, um, the draft books, yeah. the sketchbooks, or we're going to do that, we'll, we'll break down. Yeah, right? totally. But I figure at this time we'll be panning those. Sure, sure, sure. But all the labor, watching, I love how you're documenting all the labor that goes into the design process, but that's yeah. just one part of the process. Yeah, totally. I, I think I'd love to do a show at some point that was just artists' process mm -hmm. work yeah. behind the final piece maybe, yeah. and then, you know, salon style having all that material in conjunction with the final pieces because I think there's an element of that especially when you're talking to people or they're learning a medium that there's a uh, mysticism around how things get made. So folks we're going to do one quick rundown of the products we have available on the show here with Atlan Arceo Witzel um, and then we're going to peace out go get some chili yeah. and chill out. Um, folks thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we've got an original print here. This print is part of a portfolio. Yeah. We'll get some pans of that. Um, but I think this is the last one that's available. Is that correct? Yeah, I've got a couple okay. artist proofs. This is this is the best of the ones remaining that wasn't included in the portfolio. Seriously, so. last chance. Last chance. Two hundred dollars. Yeah. You can yeah. find this at yeah. qtvclive.com slash shop. Beautiful. We've got some pans of the original woodcut. Do you what's what's the process of stopping production? Will this ever be printed again? No, um, it can't. No, it can't, oh, right? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Unless it was reverse engineered, right? Uh, you okay, know, okay. starting from the from the last block and, you know, maybe like counterproofing and working back. No, I'm not even going to try to think about that. That would, I mean, <laughs> you're, you're giving me ideas, though. That would no, 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 be I mean, a fun thing to play around with. That would be a trip. And yeah. I feel like you would be probably one of the only people to, to <laughs> want to do that, to want to explore that. All right, 200 bucks. You can yeah. get this last print of this edition that is not 
of it. You can't yeah. even replicate it. Yeah, I'm not even gonna, you know, I'm not gonna do the X over the block like they do. Oh, dang, you're but, not gonna, okay. Yeah, you might you know, need it yeah. for an exhibition. <laughs> okay, um, and we've got the Bald and Otherwise publication available yeah. through Perfectly Acceptable Press. This is $15, this will sell out. Get your copy ASAP, okay? Um, and then we've got an original painting here. Yeah. It's beautiful, $300, qtbclab.com slash shop. All links will go back to Atlan's personal website. You can purchase directly from Atlan. All of these items will be shipped directly to you from Atlan. So this is a great way to engage with artists, a great way to support local creative economies. Um, Atlan, where can people find your work next? Where are you exhibiting? Is there anything that you're particularly excited about? Keep an eye out. It's not completely firm uh, yet, uh, but you know, working uh, in collaboration with a couple other printmakers uh, for a show at uh, Chicago Printmakers Collaborative up in uh, uh, you know the North Side. Yeah. So so yeah. Yeah. Keep an eye out. Yeah. And then if you want to see any work, uh, you can go to my website. It's atlanaw.com. Um, and Instagram at atlanaw is, is, there's a lot more, uh, you know, minute, minute to minute content, you know, fresh and engaging. <laughs> and uh, no, it's, it's just kind of whatever, whatever is happening, uh, you know, when the, when the website doesn't get updated, that, that'll be the, the place to check out. Yeah, I update mine like once every two years. <laughs> yeah, I hear you on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So folks, we are so, thank you so much for taking thank time you. with us today. No, it's been a pleasure. It's, it's been awesome. Um, and folks, thanks for tuning in. This is QTBC Live in collaboration with the Chicago Printers Guild, DK Chicago. Y'all have a great, great holiday season. Bye. Bye.